Welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Uh, this is not a requested video, but I wanted to cover it since I haven't covered uh, any joint cumulative distribution questions. So, here are the details. It's one of those instances where you really don't even need to write down uh, the definition of your random variables. These random variables, in terms of answering the question, um, we don't even care what they represent. Regardless, I wrote them down. X is the percent of liability policies that will be renewed, and Y is the percent of collision policies that will be renewed. We're given this joint CDF. This is a joint CDF because it's capital F, right, of X and Y, and is given by this, uh, well, this weird nonlinear function, right, of two variables. Here we have the sort of range for the values of x and y and of course i mean these are percentages it better be between zero and 100 naturally here is my picture um we're asked to find the probability that there are at least 80 percent um liability renewals and 80 percent uh collision renewals so in terms of symbols i have it here i want the uh, liability renewals, renewals to be at least 80 and the collision to be at least 80. Anything to do with joint distributions, you should always draw a picture. So what is it that we're looking for? Well, this is an and statement, so I need x to be at least 80. So technically, I would shade all of this. x is at least 80, but also y is at least 80. Simultaneously, they have to both be at least 80, which means I need this square here. And yes, actually, it is a square. That's what we're looking for. If we can find that region, that region, um, we're good to go. We're good to go. So the other reason why I wrote the picture is because there is a formula. There is a formula for figuring this out. But... How silly I mean if you guys are studying for this exam and if you're you know studying to be an actuary you have to have some kind of love for math I think and if you've taken enough math classes and learned enough math you know that you don't well you shouldn't be just memorizing things I don't even know what the formula is I don't even care a question like this you want to be able to deduce the answer just using logic and maybe, I guess, geometry. It's quite straightforward. So I think you, well, I hope you'll appreciate this. Um, let's think about this for a second. This is what I'm after. I want the probability that x is greater than or equal to 80 and y is greater than or equal to 80. Now, I also don't want to compute an integral. I definitely don't want to do that. Sounds like a lot of work. Good mathematicians are lazy, right? You've heard this. What does this mean? What does the joint CDF actually mean? Well, remember from definition, and we have to know definitions, right? It's the probability that my random variable x is less than little x and my random variable y is less than little y. This is the definition of the joint CDF. Now, I need to somehow use that here. I need to somehow use that here. So, um, in terms of what we're after, this quantity here, I'm just going to use the, the complement. I'm just going to use the complement. So here's um, what I'm going to write. So hopefully this makes sense. Again, I'm doing this because I want to use this. So I need to change the inequalities, right? So we have the following. Uh, we have the, the probability um, that x is greater than or equal to 80 and y is greater than or equal to 80. Uh, write this quantity in terms of its complement. This is 1 minus, um, I'll use parentheses here. Well, I guess I don't need them yet. 1 minus the probability. Now be careful here. We not only, this is, I guess, De Morgan's law. We not only need to switch the inequality, but we also need to switch the intersection to or. So this is x strictly less than 80 or y strictly less than 80. 
Now, a couple of things happened here. Um, we did switch the inequalities and we did not no longer put the line underneath. Uh, because of the definition of the complement, if I took the complement, I changed the intersection to or, and these are now strict. Now you know that for continuous random variables, this does not matter, but if it were discrete, it would matter. So be careful about that. Now I'll use the definition um, of basically or, basically or. And actually, I'm not even gonna think about it that way for a second. I'm just gonna look at my picture. I don't like memorizing things, it sucks. I can do it, but I don't like it. So. If I want to compute this, and I'm using the complement, right? How am I going to do this? What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to compute uh, this. And remember, we're using the CDF. We want to use the CDF. So what I can do is this point right here, this point right here is 80, 100. Why don't I compute, using the CDF, the probability that x is less than 80 and y is less than 100? What will that give me? That will give me this. That's the probability, what I just shaded, is x less than 80, y is less than 100. All right, well, that doesn't take care of everything, does it? Now, after that, what I'll do is I'll then compute. We know what this point over here is. This point right here is 100, 80. So what I'll do after that is I'll compute the probability that x is less than 100 and and y is less than 80. That will give me this rectangle. Now because you have outstanding logic skills, you're saying to yourself, there's one other thing I need to compute, right? There's one other piece we need if this is going to give us what we want. One of the issues with counting and probability is overcounting, overcompensating, or undercompensating. I calculated the area here, the area here, but there's overlap. So what do I need to do? I need to add, uh, I need to subtract actually the intersection. I need to take this away because I counted it twice. I counted it twice, right? So this intersection, of course, is 80 comma 80. So hopefully, I'm hoping you're really uh, making sense of this. So this is equal to, this is equal to, again, I need to find the probability uh, that x is less than or equal to 80, well, I guess just less than, although it doesn't matter, and y is less than 100, okay, plus, okay, so this takes care of the rectangle that was long up and down, plus the probability that x is less than 100 and y is less than 80. This takes care of the rectangle that was wider than it is tall. But now I need to subtract the square because I counted it twice, minus the probability that x is less than 80 and y uh, is less than 80. Again, let me just point out the motivation let me close that off. The motivation for doing it this way is that I want to use the CDF. I do not want to compute an integral. I do not want to find PDFs. Too much work. Too much work. So this is equal to the following. By definition, this is equal to 1 minus uh, parentheses. The CDF evaluated at 80, comma 100, right? Uh, plus the CDF evaluated at 100 comma 80 and now I need to minus the CDF the joint CDF evaluated at 80 comma 80 so 1 minus this quantity here well these three terms and what you should get here is 0 0.072 0 0.072 I'm not going to go through those last details there because I mean you just plug these numbers into the CDF I'm hoping that you're comfortable with that so I mainly just wanted to with this example uh, point out that in my opinion when you can use logic and possibly geometry to answer questions like this without relying on maybe memorizing a formula. 
just my opinion. Hope it was helpful. Uh, tell me what you think.